Hello and welcome to Promise Gaming. Well, this is going to be the last of these progressive gameplay videos because I finally hit level 60. And I've started getting myself a basic set of gear so I'll be able to start doing some dungeons. For whatever reason though, they've decided that starting Warlock gear should be pink. I'm not really sure whose idea that was because I think it's sort of stupid. Also, the Maleficent hat is funny, but... Ugh. I mean, come on. It's hard to be intimidated by a warlock in pink. Why? Why did you do that? It's like, what am I supposed to do? Kill you with love and kittens and and my little pony? No. No, bronies unite, but we are not warlocks. It's just not happening. It's just not happening. All right, well, in this video, there's just a couple things that I want to cover because we've pretty much shown you everything at this point. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the campaigns, um, specifically the Tyranny of Dragon campaigns and what they're going to do for your character for those who aren't familiar with it. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the gear sets available and what I think are going to be best for certain play styles. And then I'll just give you my final thoughts on the Warlock class and uh, how, how um, I've enjoyed the class and what I'm going to be continuing to do in the future. So alright, let's get started with uh, the campaigns because that's kind of fun. Campaigns, if you don't know, are basically end game sets of dailies in this, uh, in this game. So, the first one that was released was Sharandar, with the Moon Elves, and the Fae, and so on. And then came out Dread, uh, Dread Ring with the, uh, the Red Wizards of Fae, I think it was? Icewind Dale, and then Tyranny of Dragons is the brand new one, and I'll cover a bit of that. But um, the basic premise is, you do a set of dailies, and you gather up certain reagents. So, for example, since I'm in the Dread Ring, I'd want to start gathering up Vanguard Scripts and Thayan Ciphers. And you gather these by doing your dailies in the area. And as you get some, you unlock, for example, one out of seven of Study Thayan Writings. And you start going up the bar. And as you go, you start unlocking new boons. And the boons are permanent stat boosts to your character. That's pretty awesome. Each um, of these campaigns is a little different in terms of what they look like. So, for example, you'll notice that the Tyranny of Dragons here looks nothing like the Dread Ring progression here. A little different. Either way, it's going to take you several weeks, if not several months, to get all the way up the list. But the rewards they give you is pretty awesome, so they are worth doing in your spare time. The Tyranny of Dragons is the most recent one that was released with the same module as this Warlock, and I'll give you an example. For example, if I unlock the first set of boons, I can choose between either 800 hit points or 200 power. You know, you'll have to decide which one fits your play style and which is going to get you to the stat caps that you're looking for before you start getting diminishing returns. I'll probably pick up something like hit points, because I'm a Temptation Warlock and that's useful, and I'm not going to have trouble getting power later in the game. Then there's things like Critical Strike or Deflect, Defense or Armor Penetration, Regen or Lifesteal. I think it's going to be pretty obvious which are going to be the most useful in that, but you'll have to cho choose based on your play style. It's a nice way to get some free stats. And then the last set is where you have to make some choices. So for example, Dragon's Thirst, 3% increased lifesteal. Really awesome for a Temptation Warlock like me. Dragon's Revival grants 10% increased incoming healing. Probably not worth your time, but you have to make that choice. Dragon's Fury, increased crit severity, perfect choice for a Fury Warlock. Uh, Dragon's Grip, increased control strength. Maybe useful for Damnation, I don't really know, because I didn't explore the Damnation tree that much, but you get an idea. So that's kind of how a campaign works. There's a lot of them, a lot of dailies to go through, and you can get a lot of great boons as a result. But it does take a lot of dedication playing every stinking day for months in order to get all the way up the list in these campaigns. And for example, Icewind Dale, I can't even access until I finished Sharandar or the Dread Winning, and I've still got a certain gear score. I mean, come on. What a pain. There's also the PvP campaign that I have not really dug into at all, but... Something to consider. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is armor sets. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the epic equipment here. I'm not going to cover things like Draconic gear, Black Ice gear, and stuff like that. So those are things you get from, from your uh, daily zones. But I'm going to focus more on the standard Tier 1, Tier 2 uh, sets that you get from doing Heroic Dungeons. And I'm actually going to only cover Tier 1. Why? Because Tier 2 sets are literally the exact same thing as their respective Tier 1 set, just with better stats. That's it. No complication whatsoever. So we'll do only Tier 1. So starting at the bottom of Tier 1, we look at the Devilish Warlock's Armor. 
And an easy way to tell what build this is useful is to look at the set bonuses. So, for example, Devilish Warlock comes with Power, Recovery, Defense, Deflection, Lifesteal. Pretty useful, mostly supportive defensive, but pretty useful, good for a tanky style. You'll notice, though, if you, uh, that if you have a, a certain number of the pieces of the set, so two or four of the set, just like you would in World of Warcraft, you get stat bonuses. So a two set is 400 armor penetration. Pretty darn useful. Probably not the most important thing you're ever going to get, but pretty useful. Four of a set is where things get interesting. Your encounter powers trigger Puppet Master, which deals 3% bonus damage on the target as necrotic damage, and it's tripled if you have a soul puppet active. This is obviously the choice for the Damnation Tree, because you should have a Soul Puppet up all the time. That's one of your perks. So this becomes like a 9% bonus damage as Necrotic Damage. Honestly, the Damnation Tree is only viable as a DPS uh, build if you have this set, in my opinion. It's, it's not even a question. You have to go with this if you're going to go for the Damnation style. So that's interesting, but... Yeah, I probably won't focus on this because I don't really think I want Damnation, and I don't think it's really as uh, competitive as the others, but you get an idea. So we'll move up to the next set, Wicked Mage. Now this is interesting because uh, it's going to make us... I'm, I'm going to have to show a distinction of the Temptation Tree, but I'll explain that in a minute. Power, Defense, Deflection, and lots of Lifesteal. Oh wow, this sounds like a Temptation thing, isn't it? It is, but it's a little more complicated than that. You'll notice that the two of the set is increasing by 400 deflection. Pretty good for defense, not so good for increasing your healing, but good for survivability. And then the four set says your encounter powers release a burst of healing for 3% of the damage they deal that affects allies within 30 feet. Just to clarify, that means every time I use an encounter power, for example my fiery bolt, 3% of the damage I do with fiery bolt is going to be going out as healing to all of my allies nearby. So it's kind of exactly the same concept as the lifesteal healing you're already doing. It just gives you a little bit more every time you use an encounter power, which is going to be frequently. So not bad. If you really want to focus a lot more on healing, this is kind of useful. So that's definitely a temptation build. But uh, the, next, the next armor set is a little bit more complicated for temptation warlocks, and I'll explain that here. You'll see here that this focuses more on crit and power. Well, this focuses on power, crit, recovery, defense, and some lifesteal. Not as much, but there is some lifesteal. The two set is 400 recovery. First off, I just want to say that's actually huge for both Fury and Temptation Warlocks. Fury because you want to use as many encounters to do as, many, as much DPS as possible. Quite frankly, the extra power and crit means that this is going to be the clear choice for a Fury Warlock no matter what. But this is still useful for Temptation Warlocks because the extra recovery means you get your encounter powers faster, which means you do more damage and thus more healing faster as well. Pretty useful, you can't deny. And then you get the four of the set. Your encounter powers trigger Hellfire on your foes. It lasts six seconds, and when it expires, they take 1.5% of their max HP in damage up to 1,000 damage. So basically, every time I use an encounter, I can guarantee they're going to lose up, uh, up to 1,000 damage. Guaranteed extra damage. Pretty nice. And you're going to be using a lot of these encounters. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> In fact, I, I, I kind of think that if you're using that with uh, AoE abilities like Fiery Bolt, I kind of think it does apply. If I hit four targets, I think four of them are going to be hit with these uh, these Hellfires. So, that's this is, this is un undoubtedly, hands down, the choice for Fury. But again... Because the Temptation Warlock is unique and does make use of damage in order to heal, you can't rule this out as a Temptation Warlock. So, it's pretty cookie cutter and clear cut when it comes to Fury and Damnation, but Temptation Warlocks need to decide what playstyle they want to focus on. And it comes down to basically the Offensive Temptation Warlock and a Defensive Temptation Warlock. Offensive is going to want to take this. It'll make sure you do more damage, which means as a result you should be doing more healing. Maybe not as much as the Wicked Mage, but you will do more damage. The Wicked Mage, on the other hand, means you're going to survive better and do more healing, but not as much damage. So you really are going to have to start picking and choosing. What balance do you want to take? Do you want to take a slightly more damaging role or a far more supportive role? Which one do you want? So, I can't really tell you which is the right choice. If your goal is to be a healer for your group, then the Wicked Mage is the best choice. No doubt about it. If you're looking to be a DPS role that also provides some support, 
than the offensive uh, infernal dial, uh, diabolists or diabol diabolists. Oh, how do you pronounce that? I don't even know. Diabolists, I think. Infernal diabolist is going to be your correct choice. So that's a choice that you're going to have to make as a warlock. Now, when it comes to tier two sets, uh, you'll see that the accursed diabolist armor has the exact same effects as the infernal diabolist armor. It just has a better stat line and better uh, uh, triggered effects. Hellfire is better with this. That's it. That's all there is to it. Malevolent Warlock is going to be the exact same as the Devilish Warlock, and Nether Mage is the same as Wicked Mage. Same exact thing. It's just a straight up upgrade. So that should make things pretty easy when you're looking for your tier 2. Not bad. That's all I think I can really talk about when it comes to the armor sets for the Warlock. So now I'm just going to grab myself a few dailies and start going out there, and I'm going to start talking about my final thoughts of the Warlock class, uh, the role that I'm expecting to take, and where I kind of hope this class is going to go in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and say the Warlock class is probably my favorite one to date. Now part of that is because uh, Cryptic Studios does have a tendency to make the new classes a little bit overpowered and kind of uh, tweak and rebalance things later. So it may very well be that the Warlock is going to get nerfed in a couple of months, maybe. But while it lasts, it's mostly just the mechanics of this class that I love. I like that we have to be smart in how we apply our Warlock's Curse and we have to be a bit more strategic. Do I want to do more damage to everybody? Do I want to focus more on one target? It matters, it really does. I like the idea of the, necro of the necrotic damage, I like the way that the powers work, I love everything about the Warlock class. It's, uh, it does a great deal of damage, and the cool thing is I really love the Temptation option. You'll notice my companion is getting wailed on, but I'm healing him up almost as fast as he can take damage. I mean, he's really not getting hurt, because even with just basic blue level gear, I'm dealing a fairly decent amount of healing. I'm barely even trying. All I'm trying to do is deal as much damage as possible. That's all I ever have to try to do. With Temptation, woof! You're just a great asset to the party. And one of the things I love about that is uh, I think that I'm going to be more valuable when it comes to endgame content and dungeon raids and so on and so forth. Uh, it's just it's just awesome. The Fury Tree, on the other hand, if you want to be the Glass Cannon Super DPS, is so totally viable. I mean, I've looked into it. It's, it's a great tree. If you want to be just a straight-up damage class, then this is the class for you. It's better than Rogue, frankly. Um, and Hunters are a little bit powerful right now, but even then I would still say this probably is better in terms of straight-up damage. So, yeah, if you want to be a DPS class, you can't rule out a Fury Warlock. If you want to be a, a utility DPS, you know, you can't really decide if you want to be a healer or a DPS tree, then the Temptation Warlock is for you because it provides that. It's not as good as a Cleric in terms of straight-up healing, but it provides the great maintenance healing that your party is going to need. And I've actually done a couple of dungeons, and I have found that a Cleric paired up with a Temptation Warlock is a ridiculously sick combo. You know, I'm providing all the maintenance heals. I can keep everybody in a group alive. I can either run up next to the tank and kind of melee range and keep them alive there. I can stick back and make sure that the Wizards and the Rangers and the Clerics are all topped off. Whatever it's going to be, I'm providing so much basic healers that the, the Cleric can focus more on single target healing. I would not recommend... Uh, a, a group rely on one Temptation Warlock as their healer. It's not quite that simple. Maybe you'd need two, but it's still pretty darn powerful. I'm going to go ahead and apply a uh, Tyrannical Curse here. Why not? Boom. Oh, that's being painful. Hang on. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. I want to kill you. Thank you. We'll just, we'll just do some more damage. Okay. So yeah, I don't know. I think this is a great class. I think it has a lot of potential in terms of endgame content and how it's going to be applied later. Um, I definitely recommend Temptation. It seems to fit my playstyle the most. I don't recommend Damnation pretty much at all. I don't really see much use for it. But I'm sure that there are going to be some of you guys who have done some more theory crafting and say, Oh, no, 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 the DPS is actually comparable. In which case, hey, say so in the comments and show me a link to like, where you did your research because that's that'd be good to know. Um, one thing I haven't talked about with the Warlock at all is PvP, and that's because I don't do a ton of PvP. It's a lot of fun in Neverwinter, but I, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of sad because one class tends to be grossly overpowered. For a while, great, great Weapon Fighters were grossly overpowered, and a team of five of them would just annihilate everything. Right now, I think it's the Rangers, no, it's the Control Wizards that are grossly overpowered, and that just tends to happen in PvP. 
That said, though, the Warlock does have a few abilities, and my uh, setup is going to be Warlock's Bargain for the uh, extra, for the one, the massive damage, two, the extra lifesteal, three, it synergizes with a curse. So it is considered a curse, but it is not consumed. That is remarkably good. I'm just going to tell you right now. Remarkably good. Uh, because that means I can apply Wraith Shadow, for example, and consume, you know, I can use it as if I was consuming the curse, but it's still cursed. So I can then immediately follow that up with a Dread Theft, and I get all the perks of using a curse consumed there. Warlock's Bargain is great in PvP. It's great even in single player, frankly. So I'd recommend that. Wraith Shadow is the next obvious choice in PvP because of the immobilization, and if you are consuming the curse, it immobilizes, weakens, and damages all the nearby targets as well. So, that's killer. And then you follow that up. So you do Warlock's Bargain, Wraith Shadow, followed up by a Dread Theft. And now you're doing an absurd amount of damage. You are uh, not only uh, increasing the amount of damage they take, but reducing the amount of damage they can do to you. And you're pretty much just going to KO almost anybody that's thrown at you. So, yeah, those are the three abilities that I definitely recommend. Uh, I can't really say in terms of at-wills. Maybe something a little faster. I'd probably hold on to Eldritch Blast for the faster range cast speed and hand of blight for melee because the um the blight does reduce the damage they do in melee range so it's good against like a rogue or a, we a great weapon fighter for example but that's about it and you'll have to decide which class features and dailies fit your style the best but that's pretty much it very useful um i think that's really all that i can cover at this point so yeah here's my final stat layup i got 22 22 16 um, I'm just now starting to work into things like some uh, 2700 power and some lifesteal and such. I need to balance a lot of this out, but I'm still in blue, so sue me if it's not fantastic yet. Um, this is a list of all of the powers I took. Go ahead and pause as you need to. Take a good long look of what I grabbed. Um, as you continue to get XP, even at level 60, you're going to earn some more points. So I'll probably put more points in Wraith Shadow for the PvP aspect than maybe Blades of Vanquished Armies. But I think I've already got almost everything I would ever want to use, which is great. In terms of my feats, here's a list. One thing I am considering changing, and I think if you're a temptation like me, you're going to want to consider this. I would take a couple points out of Energizing Curse and instead put them in Toughness. The extra hit points is great for a Temptation Warlock. I'm probably going to do that. I just need to get some more Astral Diamonds first. Um, and then Blood Pact of Cania is still potentially good, so... If you find that one of these just isn't quite a flo quite floating your boat, you got to have a couple extra points that you want to spend, go ahead and throw in Blood Pact. It's not that bad. But this is what I chose for the Temptation. I did end up grabbing the rest of Daughter's Promises and uh, Gatekeeper's Empowerment from the uh, Fury Tree in order to kind of optimize my DPS. And that's about it. I won't bother telling you everything in terms of boons because I haven't done them yet, and that's really more to fit your play style than anything else. And I have to get some companions, because I'm desperately lacking in the companion department. <laughs> oh well. But yeah, that's the Warlock class, guys. I want to thank you if you've been sticking around from uh, part one to watch how this character progresses. It's been a blast to play. If you have been playing the Warlock and you've been finding you really enjoy it, or maybe you think that it needs some tweaking, go ahead and leave that in comments. Tell me what your thoughts are, because I'd like to hear another perspective on this. And uh, if you haven't played Neverwinter before... I don't know, I hope this inspires you to give it a shot, because it's a great free-to-play game. I'd recommend that everyone give it a shot if you're a big MMO fan, because it is a blast. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Provis with Neverwinter and the Scourge Warlock class. If you enjoyed the video, I ask that you leave a like, maybe a comment, and if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do so. And uh, I will see you guys for another series some other time. Thanks for watching.